Tammy, and welcome to High Voltage. It's certainly great to be back with another exciting, fun-filled show. Today on High Voltage, we'll learn about ways to release that magic within all of us. We'll meet with two future senators, hear what's the latest on campus. We'll go fly a kite. We'll enjoy the artistic visions of our art students and join the Chinese in their bicentennial celebration. All this and more coming up on High Voltage. The Leeward Oahu District Office joined forces to show us how math can be fun. Kite making dates back centuries to ancient China. Okay, this is an insect kite and it hums. It has a hummer in the back of the kite. And in the olden days, back in China, they used these hummers to scare off the enemies during the war. Maki Makika Ho'opili'ia, sponsored by the Leeward District Office, invited students and parents to experience the joy of creating and flying their own kites. I use kites uh, to teach math and physics because of the applications involved. Instead of using it, um, using mathematics as just a textbook example, instead of measuring lines in the textbook, I want them to use kite making as like an application. Well, I think kite flying is like, it's the stepping stone of maybe future engineers because they study such concepts as aerodynamics, and other engineering type of skills. And what do Kelvin students think? Well, his class is pretty fun. He talks about the kites all the time. Yeah, I mean, before this, I thought it was just for, like, more little kids stuff like that. Oh, wow. No, but, but now, like, it's kind of fun. This is my math teacher. He got me into this contest. He's the guy that's doing this whole thing. Good luck, you know? People's... Asphalt is our on-the-road music video segment where we'll be visiting events involving student groups and activities. We'll be there putting events to music. The Makemakika Ho'opili'ia is an applied mathematics project developed by the DOE Leeward District. Session 5, Kite Making, is being conducted by technology resource teacher and kite enthusiast Kelvin Chan. Some of the factors in making a good kite would be symmetry, um, also balance, and having the kite as light as possible. Makemakika is a Lira District project in the Department of Education where we bring together teachers, parents, students, and administrators, and we apply mathematics to kite making and flying. We want to create a positive, enjoyable environment in the mathematics so that the kids that, and parents and teachers that they could really appreciate mathematics when they see it in the real life world. They could use these actual skills so when they become engineers, they could apply, um, like let's say if they major in um, aerospace or um, aerodynamics, then they could apply what they learn. News 4 at 6. Good evening, I'm Dick. If you remember struggling with math in school, you might not believe what they're trying now to improve student scores. Kite flying, right, as in go fly a kite. 
News 4 Cynthia Yep reports on how Pearl City High School is soaring for math. It's heavy enough, it's double. This math class at Pearl City High School looks more like an art class. These students learn answers to complex math and science problems by constructing kites. It's an idea teacher Kelvin Chun thinks will fly. They learn geometric uh, symbols such as the hexagon and the quadrilaterals of the kites. Also what, what is being applied are um, science skills where they learn aerodynamic principles. The 9th and 10th grade students got ready for their challenge by cutting and taping together their kites. Although it appears the students are having a lot of fun, the bottom line for them is getting a good grade. 50 point if your kite flies, and bonus points will be given if you win the in, um, each different event. This is where the students find out if their equations work on the Pearl City High School athletic field. The lack of wind made it tough for some students to get their kites in the air. Oh, we don't win. <laughs> Randall Paulson somehow managed to send his kite soaring high in the sky. And for his hard work, teacher Chun gave him the highest flying award. The 10th grader says he also learned a valuable lesson. Learning about measurements has us uh, makes the kite fly straight. And if you don't, if you don't measure the right measurements, the kite will go off. But some students didn't do as well. Their kites barely made it off the ground. It was going at first, but it ended up crashing because I think the dowel's too heavy, the dowel's. So I think I measured it wrong, but it helped me understand it more at yeah, the parallelogram we learned. And I think I can probably measure it and do it over. Some students were more successful than others in getting their kites in the sky. But one lesson they all learned was flying a kite isn't as easy as it seems. Cynthia Yip, News 4. Hope you don't get bad marks for no wins. Yeah, right? I could blame them for that. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the kids are all out today for the holiday, but just before the good in the skies, I wonder how many of us who studied geometry would have jumped at the chance to skip class one day to go fly a kite. At Pearl City High, they're staying in class and making kites. Teacher Kelvin Chun says it helps students understand geometric principles. Then, even better, they get to fly the kites to see how their shape making worked. Tenth grader Randall Paulson got his classmate kite to soar, and he learned something about math and aerodynamics. Learning about measurements has us uh, makes the kite fly straight, and if you don't if you don't measure the right measurements, the kite will go off. It's a novel way of teaching, and these kids, hey, they probably don't even mind doing weekend homework. <laughs> what was that teacher's name? Kelvin Chun. Right. It's a good teacher. He sure. Wish is. I had something like that. Right.